hi guys today we will see a solution of gate aircraft structure solution which has been asked in gate 2019 first question a thin wall tube with a cross section shown in figure is subjected to a torque of capital T equals to 1 kN meter the walls have uniform thickness T equals to 1 mm and shear modulus G equals to 26 gigapascal. Assume that the curved portion is semicircular. The shear stress in the wall is need to find out in megapascal. Round off to one decimal please. You can see in the given data they have given the figure and let's see what are the given data. The torque 1 kilonewton meter which can be converted in newton meter or that is thousand newton meter thickness 1 mm need to convert in meter that is 10 power minus 3 meter and shear modulus that is 96 gigapascal if you need to convert in pascal that is newton per meter square we need to just multiply 10 power 9 in terms of pascal now let's recall the formula bread bratho theory that is t equals to 2 q a which can also can be written as that is, that is equals to 2 tau t a where q equals to that is shear flow which is equals to a shear stress into the thickness so from here in this given question we need to find the shear stress so we can rearrange and write the formula that is tau equals to t by 2ta now in this given formula in this given question we have we know t we know the thickness we know know the area but we can find the area so let's first find the area so this they have said the first one is a semicircle and then we have a triangle so from the semicircle we can find the area of a semicircle and then the area of a triangle using the formula and then we know the value of radius we know the length we know the depth and substituting we get the area of this particular figure is that 0 0.0323 meter square now we simply need to substitute the value in the our formula and we when we calculate and we get a 17.24 into 10 power 6 pascal but in this question they have asked the answer in terms of mega pascal so we can the, our right answer is 17.2 mega pascal and as per the answer which is ranging from 17.0 to 17.5 which is within the advisable range next question all the bars in the given truss are elastic with Young's modulus of 200 gigapascal and have an identical cross sections with a moment of inertia 0 0.1 centimeter power 4. The lowest value of the load P at which the truss fail due to buckling we need to find in terms of kilonewton round off to the nearest intuitors so we can see in this figure it is a truss and with that they have acting as a simple supported one is a fixed one is a roller and uh, there's one kind of truss of uh, 2d truss so what we need to do is first we need to find out a uh, reactions of this particular beam so let's go with the solution first so first we'll do a reaction this is a simple supported beam uh, rb plus rc which can be equivalent to the p because no other forces applied in this figure by the figure we can analyze so we can directly write that rb equals to rc which is also equals to p by 2 so now we got the reaction forces of reaction point B and point C. Now here how we what they have asked is we need to find the what is the value of P at which the truss will buckle. So we know in the buckling what happens is a compression force. Using that compression force where that point we will know where the buckling will take place now here we need to find the um, 
forces acting on the members and by that we will know where it is creating a critical point based on that we will find the let's see the point b using the methods of joint we can take the point b let's consider are the members of bc and ba are tensile force this is our initial assumption we need to do so now the ba members is inclining at the angle 45 now if we want to resolve that 45 that ba uh, member we will get ba sin 45 and ba cos 45 now we need to find the static equilibrium equation that is summation of horizontal forces and summation of vertical forces now same thing we can substitute in this horizontal force and we can find the value of bc we get as p by 2 now here we need to understand this very well that this member is a symmetric member that means the b point what are the forces we will we got it the same force we will get on the point c so here we can conclude that that member b a is an compressive beam so let's find the length of this particular beam so if there is a triangular we can see let's take a triangular this is a 45 degree angle inclined it with that b a b c now from there we know what is that 5 centimeter that is b at the imaginary point d b d point is 5 centimeter and we need to find the a b so simply 5 divided by sine 45 we get the length of the a b of the member is about 5 root over 2 centimeter now recalling the euler's equation euler's formula that is at critical load that is pcr equals to pi squared ei by l squared now in this given question they have given the e they have given the i value and we just found out the l value just we need to substitute the values and we get as 558309.135 newton in this given question they have asked to find in terms of kilonewton and round off to nearest integers so we can say it is of 558 kN of the critical load which will helps to buckle or helps to fail the member. So answer ranges from the 550 to 570 which is within the advisable zone. Next question. A solid circular shaft is designed to transmit a torque T with an factor of safety of 2 it's proposed it is proposed to replace the solid shaft by hollow shaft of the same material and identical outer radius if the inner radius is half of the outer radius the factor of safety for the hollow shaft need to find round off to one decimal places so let's see the solution so let's before that let's recall the torque equation torque equation is a t by polar moment of inertia which is equivalent to the shear stress by the r now in case of solid we can say that the formula is a formula for the polar moment of inertia is pi d power 4 by 32 and in case of the hollow shaft the formula is pi d power 4 minus small d power 4 by 32 now here what we have to do is we let's rearrange the equation in terms of t in terms of ts and th now in this their torque is same their materials are identical the radius are same the only change is going to have a factor of that is a factor of safety now rearrange this equation and substitute the value that is uh, torque of solid and equivalent to the torque of the hollow shaft by equating we find that that pi 16 r cube tau s by 32 equivalent to pi 15 r cube tau h by 32 recalling the factor of safety equals to tau max by tau here the tau 
max will be same because they are using a same material so recalling that factor by rearranging the equation we get the factor that is a factor of safety in case of the hollow shaft we get as 15 into 2 divided by 16 when we substitute that value we get as 1.875 and where the answer is ranging from 18 to 1.8 to 1.9 which is within the advisable zone next question for a 1 meter long simply supported beam with an concentrated vertical load of 200 newton and a concentrated bending moment of 100 newton meter at the center as shown in figure the correct bending moment diagram is they have given four options and they have given the diagram so let's see the solution first this is a simple supported beam let's find the reaction forces of this simple supported beam that is rp plus rr which is equivalent to 200 newton okay let's take a moment about the p now uh, we need to find what is rp and what is rr so for that we need to find out the moment about the point p so at the point p and the next uh, force applied over here is 200 at the distance of 0 0.5 so 200 in 0 0.5 which is going in a clockwise direction so positive 200 into 0 0.5 next is at the point q there is one anti-clockwise moment acting on the point q so minus 100 and then at the reaction force that is at the point r that is rr and which is acting on a distance of from the point p is one meter so reaction for uh, that is a uh, rr into one and equivalent to zero and when we substitute this value we are getting the reaction at the uh, point r is zero newton so therefore substituting that value in this above equation we get that that rp equals to 200 newton now considering this let's find the moment at each points starting from the right side so moment at the point r is zero there is no distance there is no force is also zero next is the moment about the point q we are starting from the z uh, uh, we are starting from the right uh, right hand side so right hand side if when we if we start then we have an, a reaction force of a distance of 0 0.5 till the point q so that that means when we equate this equation we get that the moment about the point mq is as 100 newton meter which magnitude is negative that is it is moving in an anti-clockwise direction next is the moment about the point p from the r so we know the reaction force at the point r is zero so the entire term will become zero minus of the 200 newton acting at the point q and the distance from that is of to the p is 0 0.5 so 200 into 0 0.5 plus the anti-clockwise um, that is uh, anti-clockwise moment acting on a point q so 200 into 0 0.5 plus 100 when we get it we get as zero so when we portray this into a graphical representation we get that the r to q is get zero at the point q we have that 100 and from the after reaching the 100 and directly from the q to p it's deviating linearly to the zero so among this the option a is a right answer number of independent elastic constraint for an heterogeneous isentropic linear elastic material is so here we uh, just remember this factor that when we are calling a independent elastic constraint for an homogeneous isentropic so whenever it is isentropic the value of that elastic constraint is 2 so right answer is 2 for a beam subjected to a transverse shear load through its shear center we are having four options the first one is twist per unit length is zero the shear stress is uniform throughout the cross section bending stress in the cross section are zero the shear strain is zero at the shear center so you have to know that uh, this is a question indirect question from the shear center 
so we know in the shear center there is no twist this twist per unit length is zero so the right option is option a a thin plate with young's modulus 210 gigapascal and the poison ratio 0.3 is loaded as shown in figure the change in length along the y direction is in terms of mm round off to one decimal places so we can see the given data what they have given and from here we can write down the given data that is Young's modulus they have given in 210 gigapascal we need to convert in gigapascal or whatever the conversation you want to then poison ratio 0.3 and the length uh, is 200 mm so re let's recall the generalized hooks law in an bi-directional deformations along the y-axis so we know the formula is epsilon y equals to sigma y by e minus sigma x of poison ratio that is gamma mu by e now substituting the values of the respective values of the sigma y, sigma x, e and uh, Poisson ratio. So we get that uh, sigma y that is uh, epsilon y we get in terms of 0 0.00099 and where, where we know that epsilon y equals to the change in length by original length when here in this question we need to find the change in length. So we can substitute the value multiply with the 200 we get in terms of 0.2 in a round of one decimal places. Here comes the last question for the state of stress shown in figure the normal stress sigma n on a plane inclined at an angle 45 degree to the x axis is in terms of megapascal round off to the nearest integers here comes the solution here in this given they have given the sigma x sigma y and tau x y so recall the formula for normal stress sigma n equals to sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus sigma x minus sigma y by 2 cos 2 theta plus tau x y sine 2 theta now they have also given the value of theta is 45 and sine uh, sin 90 that is 2 here we have a 2 theta so sine 90 becomes 1 and cos 90 becomes 0. Substituting the respective values on the above equation we care as sigma n equals to 215 megapascal and where the answer ranges from 247 to 255 megapascal and which is within the advisable answer.